you seem to think that this market, the sentiment, is really more resilient than perhaps we're giving it credit for. Yeah, I mean, we can say that, but, you know, the market has definitely been uh, very uh, volatile, and we expect that this volatility will continue as the uh, Fed tightens policy in response to uh, higher inflation. But we feel like, you know, soon enough uh, as the earnings starts to roll out, and we do expect a, a strong fourth quarter, of course, uh, there's a lot of problems with the workforce uh, shortage, supply chain, uh, but we think that will probably resolve itself uh, this year, and we hope that, you know, all of this stronger economic uh, growth and also the robust economic fundamentals, um, and we're still looking at good consumer spending, that will probably lead some of the way back to the equity markets, and, and hopefully um, it will not derail the, the, uh, the current uh, bull market that we have. What sectors do you prefer? I know one of them is, is certainly linked to this oil rally that we continue to see at the start of this year. Oh, yeah. Oil has been, you know, continued winner up about 10 percent this year, up about 51 percent last year. Um, and a lot of that just driven by demand. Um, and also a lot of investors are seeing, you know, uh, oil and just a wider commodity markets uh, as a hedge against inflation. And uh, whether short term or long term, uh, we, we, you know, oil is probably still going to be a, a, a good sector to invest in at this point and energy in general, um, as well as financials. And again, uh, what I was saying last year as well, towards the end of the year, we have to uh, start rotating into value sector, into not just energy, but also financials, health care, uh, other parts of the market um, that, are, that, that are not growth at this point. What about Chinese ADRs? Because that gets tricky, right? I mean, we do have uh, perhaps cheaper valuations, but at the same time, the regulatory crackdown and scrutiny seems to be intensifying. Yeah, China is always, uh, you know, again, there's a market we can't uh, miss. But, you know, the regulatory issues and also a lot of the political issues, we are just, uh, you know, we're, you know, if you're in China, uh, Staying there, we, you got to give a longer time horizon. Uh, but you know, we feel that some of the Chinese ADRs are definitely bottoming. Uh, but if you're going to get in it, uh, you have to stay in it, uh, and it's, and and you really wanted to have that as part of a diversified portfolio. What happens to the broader EM complex then? Because we saw this investors pouring in so much money last week in expectation that the, Chi that the Chinese government would actually ease policy. They did and uh, go ahead with that. But at the same time, China is just such a big part of EMs. If you're a little bit cautious about the regulatory crackdown, what can you do in the EMs? Well, EM is something we definitely want to hold. Uh, we see 2022 as uh, two halves, the first half. Hopefully, we're going to see the developed nations adjust to the normalization of rates, uh, inflation. And that's what's, being, that's what's happening in the U.S. right now. We see all this volatility is because we are adjusting to this normalization, which is, you know, it, it needs to happen for the overall health of the economy. And this is the right thing to do. Uh, but, you know, the second half, we're going to start seeing, hopefully, uh, growth uh, out of emerging markets, out of China. Hopefully, China's going to lead the way with that. Um, but that's going to take some time as the policies stabilize, as the political and regulatory um, uh, policies stabilize. And hopefully, you know, we, we, we are, out, our outlook for that market, for emerging markets, China, is going to be more positive the second half of this year.